You may remember last year we fitted the Renergy inverter, uh, which powers the outlet down at the bottom there, the black one, uh, but that's the only one it does. So anytime you want to make a copy or anything like that, you have to pull uh, the, the, any appliance over here to do it. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of that, fit an automatic transfer switch, which will transfer between shore power and the inverter, depending on what's available. So that's what we're going to do today. All right, so last year we installed the Renergy inverter on the boat and what we did with that is we connected it up to one outlet, only one outlet, uh, which was fine. We used it like that. We put the coffee machine right next to it and did it, but there was no possibility to use things like the microwave or potentially something else in the cockpit where we where the uh, another outlet is or in any of the bedrooms or anything like that. So what I wanted to do was uh, change that setup slightly and install a uh, automatic transfer switch. So what I've got here is a box that came from Amazon and uh, um, I'm gonna basically do an unboxing of this, right? So I've got a couple of other things as well. I'm gonna start with this. So, so this is the uh, Powermax um, uh, automatic transfer switch and basically it's the uh, PMTS uh, 30 and it's a 30 amp automatic transfer switch so what it does is basically it senses for shore power and if shore power comes along it turns off the inverter so it, it stops you from using your inverter when shore power is available so we're gonna open it so it's pretty well packaged, as you can see. Um, just gonna slice it open um, and take a look inside. So, comes with a set of instructions uh, on how to set it up uh, and some safety stuff as well, and, and what, and basically what is what. The unit itself is inside another box inside and protected on, on all sides. I'm going to slide it out. It's got so move that to one side and and that's the unit. Now it's in a plastic bag. So I'm just going to open that. So now this is the unit itself and it is, as you can see, it's got holes here to screw it down and it's got knockouts uh, here and here and there and there. And on this side, there is a bunch of connections uh, which pro are most probably ground connections. Uh, so it's open here, there's basically it's a plastic box and it's got these little little clips, it just clips around. So you just bend it in a slightly to get it out. So here's the internals. Uh, now what we what it comes with is it comes with connectors already connected on, uh, which then you can take off and crimp into place. What the instructions say is that while looking at the device in this orientation, these two connectors here are from Shaw Power. So here you would connect uh, Shaw Power Live and Shaw Power um, Neutral. Actually, the way it's described in the manual is not the way we want it to operate. So we will connect the Shaw Power to the side connections, 
and the inverter to the connections at the end, just as illustrated in this picture. And then at the back here, these are the outgoing lines. So these go out to the wiring panel. I'm going to set this up tomorrow when I'm back on the boat. We've got connectors over here that are um, the earth connectors. So all the lines will come in. Earths will all be terminated over here. I've got a lot of spare wire uh, of the, um, the anchor wire that I used last year. Um, so that will be used for any of the connections I need to make. And we'll go from there. Um, as you can see, um, that because the neutrals are, sorry, the lives are all on this side and the neutrals are all on this side, you can actually, um, it, it disconnects the entire thing, not just one side. So it doesn't leave the neutrals all connected. It disconnects everything, which is what is required um, to be able to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a place to put it. Um, it's quite a big box and uh, it's going to fit somewhere over here either behind the panel here or inside this this cabinet uh, behind the wall hopefully but we will take a look and see what we can do so i'm going to start taking things apart so i found a location um so what we're going to do is going to put it in the back of that cupboard over there uh, i'm not going to screw it in because screwing it in would be screwing it against the side of the boat uh, so i'm not going to do that but what i am going to do is there should be no force it's not very heavy the whole thing's pretty light I'm going to velcro it to the back there uh, so it's it's stuck in there and shouldn't move anywhere um, but it'll be held as well by the wires and we'll all sort of push against it and slightly hold it in place um, so it'd be pretty pretty secure um, I've taken off the outlet over here and this is the the cable from the uh, from the um, uh, from the inverter and I'm going to add that and then I'm going to take off some cables over here to add to the to the other as well so I'm going to do that now okay so this is how far we've got so far we've got this side coming in here and that goes out and that's going to go to the uh, uh, to the panel here uh, and then um, the other one we've got coming in is the uh, inverter now the way this works is it senses voltage on these two lines here and then switches if this voltage is available. So what the way we want it is that the inverter is primary and that, but when shore power is available, it switches to shore power. As soon as shore power disappears, it switches back to the inverter. And that's how we're gonna wire it. Shore power wires are very short. So I'm gonna have to do that in there um, so that's why I'm talking about it now. Uh, you may not be able to see it once it's in there. So um, everything's connected up. You can see the black uh, device over here. Uh, this, uh, we, I've got the new USB outlet on one side. Um, there was a problem with the old GFCI. Uh, the button was sort of broken, uh, the reset button. So I couldn't get it to work. I tried uh, to make, make sure that there was no loose connection or anything it, it all appeared right so I swapped for the other one and it works fine um, I, I will change that into a new white one and um, I've got to get one uh, but for now that's what I'm doing for the demonstration um, you'll see over here that um, that you've got about an average right now of about 6.5 amps coming out of uh, this battery house one uh, and you'll see that on the screen close up uh, when we when we look at this but as you can see here the energy the green light and the energy is on and also here the red lights on the um, power uh, are there on house power I've got the outlets connected up and um, that's why we're drawing a little bit of current and what you'll see is when I go downstairs now and plug in the shore power you'll hear the the unit click but it'll take 20 seconds after I, um, after I uh, turn, uh, you know, plug it in. So keep watching the the uh, battery meter, and um, I will go and turn the power. There is a delay of 20 to 30 seconds before it switches over. There you go. Did you hear it click? It just clicked. And if you look at the 
crates now. You'll see them dropping off. You can see the average coming down over the minute. So there you have it, successful test. If I go the other way um, and go and unplug power, you, it, it happens the opposite way. So that's the demonstration complete. I'm just gonna wrap things up here and and uh, close all this up, um, but that's that's it pretty much done. Um, thank you for um, thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment. I'm sure there's some comments out there, uh, especially about me using the 20 amp uh, socket. But like I said, it's only for demonstration. I'll I'll swap that out once uh, once I get a new one. Um, uh, that's the 15 amp version.